So I've been working on this project for a while now, which is an ultra low power platform for the ESP32. And everything has been going great so far with it. And one of the things that I found though is that OTA is really a must for this, which is over the air updates. You know, I've got these boards all over the house, so going around with my laptop hooking a USB cable up would be a total pain. So having the ability to put this into OTA mode and then from my laptop over the Wi Fi network, I can easily update the code. And, uh, I've made videos in the past on how to do this, but it's been from the command line, which is kind of, you know, scary to some people, especially like the average person that might not be that technical. So what I wanted to do, and this sort of became an obsession one night, was create a simple GUI on how to do this. So let me give you a quick demo of what I did here. So with my board, if I press and hold the wake button, it'll put it into a configuration mode. We see the flashing LED there. And then from Google Chrome, we go to this little configurator app I wrote in P5JS. We're going to connect to my Wi-Fi network here. We see we're connected. I note the IP address is 1.121. I'm going to initialize OTA, which a little tip here. The OTA works a whole lot better if you do not have Bluetooth going at the same time. So when I initialize this OTA, this whole app here is connected to the ESP32 over Bluetooth, so it's going to disconnect this app here. Okay, we're disconnected. The LED has stayed on, and now let me show you what I created here. I'm going to run this on my Mac, so we're going to go to the Mac OS folder. Also have it for Linux and Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. Now to run this app, you can, you can download these if you want. You will need to install Java. So you see the first thing the app does is ask you to select a bin file to upload. From your Arduino IDE, all you would do is go to Sketch and export compiled binary and that'll actually export that straight to your sketch folder so then you can go and click show sketch folder you'll see where that dot bin file is now I've already exported that and I've got it right here which is the trig board base firmware so I'll just open that up and recall we had dot one dot one two one so we just click upload so I put this little simple GUI here together and I think this is going to make it a whole lot easier. Okay, so we've got a success there and that's it. So we could actually fire up another board, put it back into OTA mode and upload to it just by changing the IP address. It'll use that same bin file. So I've got 10 boards in the house. All I have to do is just type in the new IP address and click upload and I'm, I'm good to go. In the future, it might be kind of cool for this GUI here to have some kind of discovery for the DNS. You know, you've got a host name set on here. You can see here, even in the example code, the host name myesp32. Or if I go to tools here, it's built into the Arduino IDE, I could go down to port and I should see it. Here's a network port. So you see it was dot .121 there with the host name set. But recall, if I were to just upload straight from here, you could do that, but you have to recompile the code. So that takes some time. If you just want to simply upload bin files, you know, without recompiling, using the GUI or command line uh, is the way to do it. And I know everything I talked about so far was with this trig board here, but really any ESP32 board would work with this. So if you go to your examples folder, you'll go down here to examples for the ESP32 and you'll see Arduino OTA and we're using the basic OTA example for this. So in my base firmware, I'm just using this, which is this Arduino OTA library for the ESP32. And I've got all of the defaults set here. The default port is 3232. You know, those things are just hard set within the GUI. I'm not using a password for this because I'm on a private network here. And in my case, I'm actually physically putting it into OTA mode. There's no way that this thing can automatically throw itself into that mode. So I don't think there's a need to password protect it. So this GUI would work with this example, but one of the other things that could be kind of a pain is all of your boards, you need to know what their IP addresses are. From my configurator tool, I actually showed that, you saw it, 121. 
But if you've got some other board without a configuration thing where you press and hold the button and then it goes into OTA mode, how would you know what the IP address is? Well, you could use a static IP address in your code, which then you would just know what it is. Or you could use one of those like apps that scans your network and shows you all of your devices and you would see this on there. Let me show you that real quick. So I'm using some app called Net Analyzer, and if you just go and scan there, I actually do, see, I'm doing this off camera here, but I do see the .121 IP address with the name Espressif. So that's one way to discover it, and you would just go through and look and see, you know, which ones you have labeled Espressif. Or... I've also used an app called Thing which uh, was helpful with a Raspberry Pi running that headless where you needed to VNC into it, but you needed to know what its IP address was. So I'm trying that now here on my phone. So I just tried Fing, and it does discover the device, but it sees it as a generic device. So that's not good. I'm trying a new one here I just found, iNet Tools. So we'll try that real quick and see what happens. Okay, doing something called a LAN scan here within that app. Alright, cool. So it did find it as Espressif with the host name. So that's good. So if we ever needed to update a board and had no idea what the IP address is, we have a way of finding out. So that's enough demo. Let's get into what this code is doing. Okay, so like I mentioned, if you wanted to run the code on the ESP32 to support this GUI, it's basically just what you see here with this basic OTA example. And I baked this right into that base firmware for my trig board design. So the GUI code though, let's get into that a little bit. So what I want to show you first though is if I were to just select that network port down here, just real quick, I want to refresh you on how this does an OTA. So if I were to just click upload here, you see right here this last line. So I'm showing everything here down in the, the console, but you see this very last line right here. If I were to copy that line out, we'll take a quick look at it. This is the command line uh, command that we would actually execute from here. So I'm on a Mac, so this would just be put right into terminal. If you're on a Windows machine, you're actually running an ESPOTA.exe file. Same kind of thing, though, where you pass in these arguments. And you see one for the IP address, the port 3232, uh, no password, and the actual file here, the bin file. So basically, this was, you know, my starting point was how do I replicate this, but instead of having to pass in arguments, have a nice little GUI input where we can just type in the IP address. So to start, I want to look at this file right here. So if we look at that file here on the computer, it actually comes along with the ESP32 core package, you know, when you install that within the Arduino IDE. Follow it all the way down through, and you've got the esptool.py, and then there's the ota.py, and then, of course, the exe file for a Windows machine. So let's look here at this, and that is .py, so it is Python, of course. We'll open that up, take a look. So looking at this code, it's actually not too bad. There's only a few functions in here. You've got this update progress right here at the top, which is actually used to show you what your progress is, and that's what I use to, to draw that little progress bar out. And then you've got the serve function here, which is... What does everything? This handles the entire show here. This is, if you just call this one function here from some other piece of code and pass in these few arguments into it, then it will run. So what I decided to do is force all of these things and then just run this file directly. So even if we go down to where it collects the arguments, so you see we've got a parser here, and uh, this pulls in all of the arguments, like, you know, the dash I with the IP address. You see it right here. Lowercase i is the IP address that you want to uh, update. So what I did was change all of the defaults here to what I wanted it to actually do and then run it without any arguments from the code. And that worked, and I was able to get an upload. So, you know, I put in my dot .121, you know, IP address here. I did, I left that one alone. We're going to use 3232. Um, the host port, I'm leaving that alone and let it just pick a random port for the host. 
no uh, password for this and then in here for the file I actually just put in a um, a path to where the bin file is and then let it rip and it and it uploaded so enough looking at this let me show you the actual GUI code so that you can follow along what I'm actually doing here so you see I copied that whole function out of there that whole serve and update progress function I'm not doing anything with the argument stuff, so you know, because we're gonna have all that built into the GUI, so I didn't bring that along. So you see we've got that here. Now this is all written in processing. So if you go and download processing, you can run it in a Python mode. So it will run this straight the way it is, which is kind of cool. And then what's nice about this processing here is that I can go up here and go to file and export out an application for this. So you've got Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is kind of cool. So, you know, I can generate everything here, and I've tested this on a Windows machine as well, and it does work. And this processing is kind of like Arduino-like. So you see we've got setup here, and then down below we have draw, which is like your loop function. So the first thing I do, though, in setup is go and grab the bin file. So you see we've select input and then this is going to actually open up that dialog to go and select the bin files. And we've got this file selected function which is called when you select the file. And if you close the window or you hit cancel, it's just going to exit out of the program. Otherwise, we're going to basically set the path for where that file is. And it's just like before with the arguments, you know, when if we were to just run that from command line, we put in the full path to where the bin file is. So this is basically doing the same thing. So we're doing, uh, we're creating a string here with that absolute path from whatever the, the selection in is that comes in once you actually click a file. Now I'm not doing any kind of checking on if you selected a real bin file or anything like that. So there's a lot of ways you can crash this GUI. And then I thought it would be kind of good here to actually show the uh, the file that you selected within the GUI in case you know you click something you weren't sure and before you hit upload you want to make sure that you actually have the right file selected. So you see this here this global var variable that I set OTA status and let me run this again and show you what that is. So OTA status is updated throughout the draw loop here as text drawn at the top. So you see right here file to upload as I set it right here is the name of the file you're going to upload. Okay, so once you've got a file, then we draw the GUI. Now what's really cool here, and this is something kind of new to me, was this GUI library. And I, the one I'm using, I'll find it here in a second, is the Control P5 library, which, you know, normally with my processing GUIs that I've done in the past, I draw everything just as like rectangles and lines and text. Uh, but this is phenomenal. So if you actually go to this Git page here, you'll see all of the examples. And I mean, it's as simple as like drawing buttons and text input, and you can you can put in sliders and all kinds of stuff. So this made this a whole lot easier because all we need is a button and a text input. You see, so we set up our instance here for the, the Control P5 library, the CP5. So we're going to add in a, a text field. It's going to be our input IP address. And then you've got all of these parameters for that text field. It's position, the size of it, what font you want to use. And I'm using a 20 font up here that I've created up here. So that's what's used for it. Uh, the focus. So when you open it up, we want the cursor to be blinking within that text field. Uh, the color you know, of the text the background color, I mean, it's really cool. Even the uh, the cursor, as it's blinking in there, what color you want that to be. We can set a default uh, text for it, which IP address text is set somewhere here. There it is, dot .100. Auto clear is set to false because once you hit enter or if you hit enter, I don't want it like clearing out. And then the label that you see below it is ESP32 IP address. And then the label or the text or the color of that label, we want black. And I know I'm going through this very quickly, but once you start playing around with this stuff, it's pretty easy. Same thing for the button. You see CP5 add button, and all it's going to be is upload the position, the size, the font, and that's all there is to it. And we've got a button right there. Now, instead of creating an event for the button when I click it, 
I actually have an event, sort of a global event, if you click anywhere within the GUI. So if I click anywhere within this GUI, it's actually going to be calling this. So only if, though, when we get the button is on status, which is if I'm right over it here like this, and I click it, it's going to then execute this thread here, which is run server. I'll talk more about threads in a second. So this run server function is down here, which should kind of look familiar from the OT, the, the ESP OTA file. So right here you see serve, and this is passing in all of those arguments. So that's going to be the target IP address is actually from that text field input, which we do, we get up here. You see cp5.get, the actual text of whatever you have typed in there. And again, no error checking. You can put something totally wrong or have, you know, nothing in there. And it'll still take it and fail or crash completely. So we send that along. Our host IP address doesn't really matter. Set that to all zeros. Um, the port is going to be 3232. So if you need to use a different port, you can change that. It's hard-coded in, in the GUI, but I'm just giving you this code so you can create your own GUI. Maybe you want to add you know make everything custom in here and just like before you saw the local port was this randomized thing up here so I just grab that as well so it picks a random integer between those two values and then the file to upload is simply that path we created from the selection and of course we're flashing or, or writing to flash which is uh, zero up here so that was brought right over from the ESP32 OTA file so then it just runs from there now the reason I had to create a thread is because once you call this you're not going to ever get back to the draw function down here and if you never get back to the draw function then how am I going to show the status in real time so by creating a separate thread, that allows that just to just go, this function here to just go run off on its own while still running the draw function here and updating the OTA status text, which is why you'll see throughout here, I had to modify this slightly to update that text. OTA status is starting, binding, or any failures you have throughout here. So you'll see OTA is also a status is equal to that message there that's created. And you'll see that too in here if I do that real quick. So that nothing is in OTA mode right now, so I'll just do that. So you see sending invitation to that address, then that's right here. And we're in a while loop here, so that's why it's important for this to be in its own thread completely. So even though we updated the OTA status, the draw function can still see that global variable and update that text on the GUI. And nothing in here was modified at all. So it just opens up that socket connection with the ESP32, sends the file, and as it's sending it, it's call we have a little call back here to this update progress function. And right in here is where I actually, right in here, the OTA status is equal to the same thing that you would normally print out to the command line when you're running this file. So that is, I think, pretty much all I wanted to show you. This code is up on GitHub, and if you go to it, so you can just pull down any of the application folders you may want to use for this. I tend to get the best luck on Windows with a 32-bit version of this, and just make sure you install uh, Java. I think that's all that's really needed. It'll actually throw up some warning at you that you need to install an older version of Java. Don't do that. Just make sure you've got the latest and greatest, and I think it should work. Uh, nothing seems to be needed with uh, the Mac here. I've tested it on a few of the machines I've got around the house here. I have not tested it on Linux or even a Raspberry Pi, but that would be kind of interesting to see what happens. So anyway, that was just a quick video on, maybe not a quick video, but uh, just on how this, uh, how I created this simple little GUI. And uh, I think I might also create one for doing uh, USB uploading just to make things a whole lot easier. And that's everything I got. Thanks for watching.